And my guest tonight has it all. Lisa Mason is a British gymnast who has competed for her country at the Commonwealth Games, European Championships, World Championships and the Olympic Games. She was the vault champion at the 1998 Commonwealth Games and was part of the first Great Britain women's artistic gymnastics team to qualify for the team events at the Olympic Games. Having resigned at the tender age of 19, Lisa made a stunning comeback in her early 30s, winning numerous national titles and being invited to world trials for the Great Britain team. Lisa has also talked about the dark side of the sport that she loves, bravely calling out serious physical and mental abuse within British gymnastics. Lisa also made quite the splash when she starred in the reality show Celeb X in the City. I've been auditioning for that one for years. They've got my uh, details on file. Lisa is also a gymnastics coach and a choreographer, as well as being a sports model and a stunt double, something we've also got in common. What a career with plenty more to come. I'm delighted to say that Lisa Mason joins me now. Hi, Lisa. Hi. What a treat to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. When did you first get into gymnastics? How old were you? <laughs> Can oh. I just apologise? I've got a few bottles of Russian vodka under the desk. Oh, that's where they yeah, were. It just helps me, <laughs> helps me uh, get through the show. Um, yeah, t tell me um, when you first got into gymnastics. Um, I was five, actually. Um, I was caught climbing on my house roof at the age of five with my troublesome brothers. Um, and my mother decided to sign me up to gymnastics classes to channel my energy. So, yes. And yeah. was that a good move? Definitely. It definitely um, took it out of me. I had a natural knack for it. Mm. Um, my coach at the time saw my potential and, you know, quickly moved me to a gymnastics club that was a little bit more advanced and dealt with elite gymnastics. So, How important is a good head for heights in a gymnast? I mean, I... I, <laughs> I don't... I don't. I guess it's instinctive to you. It's like asking Lewis Hamilton if he minds going fast in a car, right? I, I know. I mean, you've got to have, you know, a little bit of self-confidence and, um, yeah, there's, I, it's mind over matter. I think this is why we start so young, because, you know, there's no fear when, you are, when you're younger and as you get older. Because I, I wouldn't, think... you know, it's implicit to you. I couldn't, the idea of throwing myself around the place, even on my wedding night, <laughs> It's too much. I couldn't do it. You know, I, I did the jump, which is that Channel 4 oh. um, winter sports show, and I was absolutely terrified. Oh, that looked so much fun. I would have loved to have done that Of course, that you one. would have been. You'd, <laughs> you'd have won it. You'd have crushed Spencer Matthews, who, who ultimately won. So you were five, and yeah. you, you, got, you got into it pretty quickly, did you? I mean, did you, was, yeah. it, was it like pushy parents, or, or were you the one that embraced it? No, my mum and dad were never pushy. Um, it was something, it, it kind of just snowballed because I had a natural talent for it. Um, I was kind of doing, you know, strong hours as a young girl. I think from the age of 10, it was very much, um, OK, are we going to we could potentially make the Olympic team. So the hours started and then there was, you know, moves to live with my coach and, you know, do home education, if you will, you know, instead of going to school. So um, it's something I always kind of I knew I knew that I wanted to do it. So, so it um, came, your mum introduced you to it at five, but yep. it came from you. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, like I said, it was an, something I was naturally good at. I was never scared of heights and mm. of flipping and trying new things. I was very much, if I saw someone do something, I'd be like, I can do that. And I would, you know, just try it. Um, so I think it was just, it was just a progression of, OK, well, this girl actually has talent. So and if you start at five, I mean, you were on the roof at five anyway with your yeah. brothers. But yeah. if you start that early, it acclimatises you to, to any peril, I would have thought. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think there, there is this um, pushing too early from mm. such a young age. And, you know, maybe I was probably doing too many hours, mm. you know, at a young age. But that's how it was back then. So it's, it was it was a very different time. Whereas now, you know, girls that age or guys that age are not pushed to do so much at such a young age. So, you know, coming 
out of, you know, the Nadia Comaneci era when everyone looked at these gymnasts as tiny little things and little Polly Pockets. Mm. Um, and everyone aspired to be like that. So that's kind of why they pushed young girls at such a young age and overtrained them to keep them small. Whereas now, you know, understanding the sport more and having more science behind it. Um, Rather than quackery. Yes. Like, OK, well, if, you know, you need to lose weight, you just don't eat. Whereas now there's a lot more, you know, people that are there that understand everything. So there's more support and, yeah. And you were pushed at perhaps it was a different era, perhaps over pushed slightly. And you, yeah. you talked about some of the downsides of, of, of your experience mm-hmm. as an athlete. I know you're very positive about the whole experience, but, mm. you know, there, there, there's a there's a... There's an important, uh, you know, amount of reflection needed for yeah. what, what you and many of your colleagues went through. Yeah. Uh, what might have been the downsides to being overpushed when you were young? Could, could you say now, could you identify what, what the issues were with long hours and too much training? Were you, um, were you just tired or was it a mental thing? I think more, do you know what, if I'm honest, I think more so it's, you're kind of in these scales of, I kind of gave up my childhood, if you mm. will. You know, where my friends were always out and, you know, doing what kids do. I was training eight hours a day, six days a week. Um, Would I change it? No, because the experience that I got from doing that has given me so much more in life. I think there's um, a very fine line, especially within sports like gymnastics or diving, where, you know, you can compete at the Olympic Games at such a young age Mm. and you know, there's this mentality of you you want to push them to be the best that they can be, um, but there's always that, are you pushing them because you're that egotistical coach that wants that for them because it makes you look good, or are you pushing yourself? And I just think to understand that kind of adult mindset of understanding what you want, it's hard to have that as a child you know, and I think that's, for me, has always been like the main thing with the whole dark side of gymnastics is I think there needs to be more, um, what's the word I'm Duty of care? Yeah, I uh, just, I think there needs to be an allowance mm. of recognising that gymnasts don't need to be like this. And actually you can be a woman and you can have a woman's body shape. Mm. And do the skills that you can do because you're constantly told, well, you're, you're, you're fat if you've got, you know, boobs or a bum, <laughs> you know, in gymnastics especially. So I, I feel like understanding that and especially with the NCAA, they, you know, have adapted the equipment. They embrace women's bodies. They, you know, they help them move forward in, in, in a longer career. Mm. And that is happening and we're seeing that, which is amazing. Um, but there still needs to be, you know, a little bit more of that kind of, oh, yeah, it's acceptable for you to have a woman's body shape and still be able to do the things that you could do. And perhaps a little bit more of a work-life balance for these, yeah. for these young athletes too, yeah. where, where sometimes the trainer says, actually, do, do go to that party. Yeah, well, that's it as well. You know, I think COVID especially has shown so many people that actually you can take these girls out of a gym for a few weeks at a time and they can come back with the right training and the right preparation and the support they can come back and still do it yeah just having two weeks off of the gym is is not you know career breaking so i think that has been the the upside of covid with the, within yeah. the gymnastics world, it's been I a believe. useful experiment yes to show that if if you keep your nutrition right and of course you can do body weight yes. exercises and you um, can maintain your body you can yeah. you can stay flexible you can stay strong oh i mean i didn't stop, <laughs> I didn't stop for two years look at me now there you are <laughs> you're welcome i mean um what about, because I want to get onto all the positives and, and all the victory and everything, but, yep. you know, you've, you've been a great role model, I mean, a great champion, but also you have spoken out about uh, some of the excesses of mm-hmm. what you went through. Mm-hmm. And it was a very brave thing to do because then others who felt the same yep. were able to speak out. Yes. So you must be very proud of that. What, what were some of the low points for you? I mean, obviously, some of it's retrospective, isn't it? You look back and go, oh, wait a minute, I didn't have a childhood. Mm-hmm. So at that point, I guess the damage is done. Mm-hmm. But at the time, did you go through particular issues that that now have stayed with you um no I think if I'm really honest I was probably one of the lucky ones I've always 
been quite outspoken. I think a lot of my coaches can agree with that. You gave as good as you got. Definitely. Um, I would always stand up and speak out. So um, I wasn't, I guess, the, I don't know if the word is targeted in that mm. way. Um, so I've always been very well spoken. Again, as I said before, you know, my ear was very different. That was like the norm. Um, however, I knew and recognised that this stuff still does happen in this day and age. And that's why I needed to speak up and say, you know what? This no. culture, a bit like Me Too in Hollywood, yes. this culture has to be zero tolerance. Yeah. And there are many opportunities for these trainers to target yeah. girls. I mean, what, what might that look like? How would it manifest itself targeting? What, who are they looking for? What do they do? Well, I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily targeting as such. It's just something that has... It's always just been that way because it was taught the old Soviet way and, mm. you know, that's how you do it. That's how you make Rigid. champions. Yeah. Mm. Um, like I said, when I first started my career, that's how it was. So understanding so much more now and having, you know, like I said, science and things behind it, it's a different world, but there was still, you know, a large proportion of people in the gymnastics world that were like that. However, there was a lot of coaches that I've seen firsthand that have been very much that way in the old days, but they have adapted, they have changed, they have grown and they have learned and they've taught themselves that actually that way I was taught is not the right way. And they are better in themselves and they're becoming better coaches. And I'm sure you had some fabulous coaches. Look at the success yes. you had. And, you, you know, it was a, a, overall a very positive experience. Yeah. But it's not good, is it, either for these coaches to have too much power? Um, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of, I don't want to say pressure on a coach. And gymnastically, I think mm. back in the day, you were everything as a coach. You know, you were a nutritionist, you were a physio, you were taxi a taxi driver, yeah, everything. And, un, and un, in a lot of occasions, yes, you would live with your coach. I would lived with my coach for a long time. Um, How old were you when that happened? Um, I was probably around 11, I right. think. And I'm sure that, you know, in that case, there was no cause for concern. No. But- I guess looking back on it, your parents were quite brave, really. Not everyone, yeah. not everyone in this day and age would go for that, knowing what we know now about some of the risks. Yeah, well, I, th- I think, like I said, it was a very different time then. And, you know, in order to have this, you know, goal at the end, that yes, you can actually go to the Olympics and y- you can be the best Britons had at that time. And my my parents wanted the best for me. They wanted, they knew that was I had it. Was it a bit it like there. boarding school, effectively? Was it Monday, yeah. Monday to Friday? Yeah, well, I was doing six days a week, eight hours a day. So. And it's because you trained so much and the facilities were, were close to where your trainer was based. Yeah. So it was a so, practical solution. Yeah, basically. Amazing. And look, <laughs> here you are. You've got this amazing CV. Mm. Uh, first of all, before we get to medals, what does gymnastics, what has it done for you? When you're flying through the air like that, mm. you're upside down, your legs are all over the place. You've got this <laughs> amazing technique, you know. Emotionally, what's it giving to you? It's like, um, it's, I guess, like an adrenaline rush, isn't it? Mm. You no, know, people like to jump out of aeroplanes. Mm. I like to do flips. So. Yeah. so it is a buzz for you, like yeah. a, a healthy drug. Yeah. Um, being able to do things that I guess normal people can't, mm. you know, is, is quite freeing and... I think that for me, you know, having two separate careers in two different decades, yeah, you know, it's, it's made me feel like, you know, there shouldn't be limitations because of your age. Well, you, you, you retired at 19 and yeah. went back at 31? Yes. Just amazing. And yeah. what, was, what was behind that gap? Was it injury? Uh, no, I, 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 was, I was done. I had a baby. <laughs> um, and I was asked to do, because I was doing, you know, a lot of sports modelling and stunt work. And I was asked to do the show at the London Olympics for the opening ceremony. Mm. And me and my, oh, well, I'm not going out there and just doing one summer. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the stuff that I used to do. Um, and I could still do it. And someone said, well, you could quite easily come back and do that yeah. again. Why don't you? I was like, hmm, maybe I can. And then everyone was like, you're crazy. You can't do it. And for me, that was a massive motivation because I was like, really? OK, yes, I can. And I'm going to show you. So I was very much like 
um, pushed on by people telling me, no, you can't. And I guess so. you came to it, your, 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 your uh, you know, renaissance, mm. your second coming. Yeah. Uh, you would have been a more sort of self-possessed, confident human being. It was very different because going into it and understanding what you're doing with your body, like I said earlier, you know, when you're a child, you kind of just do it. So your coach says, do this, and you, you just do it. Half the time, you don't actually understand what you're doing. Mm. A lot of mental blocks are involved, uh, I feel, with, like, adolescence and, you know, um, going into it, understanding as a coach. Um, I had a great relationship with my coaches, and, you know, I couldn't do the numbers that were required as, you know, a younger athlete, but I was very um, good at delivering when I needed to deliver. So it was it was a great experience going back and actually having fun with it and actually having a relationship with my coaches where I could talk to them and understand and they could break it down to in a way that I could understand too. So yeah, I loved it. My second coming was it was the most fun I had. Yeah, honestly. and you, as you said a very consistent performer you put yeah. points on the board. <laughs> uh, what about representing your country in gymnastics? Tell me about that. I mean, it was going an, to the Olympics. Yeah, it was an it was, a, it was an honor. Um, it's like I said, I would never, you know, change anything in the sense of what I've accomplished, and um, it. I kind of just take it as the normal. If I'm really honest with you, it's just it's been such a huge part of my life that I'm. It's just oh yeah, you represented your country. Oh yeah, you went to the Olympics. It was just it's normalised for me now. I guess that's it. Sounds really strange, doesn't it? But well, it's it's spectacular. It's not normal at all. We're, we're not worthy. <laughs> we can only dream of achieving what you have. Uh, your story is an amazing one. Uh, the story continues. You're a broadcaster now. You've had a bit of fun on the telly. Uh, you did that celeb dating show. Yeah. <laughs> did you meet anyone on that show? <laughs> No such luck. No, such luck. no I didn't. Well, but it was it was fun to do. You I don't know. want to date celebrities, I tell you. Uh, <laughs> it's the terrible. road to ruin. I oh, know. <laughs> uh, and and um, what about what's next for you? Uh, more stunt stunt double work? Um, yeah, potentially. So um, you're a stunt double. Is that in TV or movies? Or um, at, well, I've done a lot of commercials and things like that. Mm-hmm. Stunt work on movies is very different and mm-hmm. it requires months of going away on set. And no. I have a five year old. So, so what I, have you, could you tell us what you might have done in an advert? You like fallen out of a car or something? Or? Oh, it's most, a lot of is the time. Is it brave stuff? You have to be brave, right? I mean, no, it's a lot of wire work, trampoline work, flips. Oh, wow. I've done a lot of music videos and things like that. I mean, a lot of the time, you know, it's, I'm stunning for someone or I might do something. Am I talking like to the real Madonna here? <laughs> the real Gaga. <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> I knew Madonna didn't do that flip. <laughs> Far too elegant. Oh, blimey. Uh, well, she definitely hasn't got a head for heights. Listen, it's been a privilege to have you Thank on the show. You. Uh, how can people find out more about what you do? I, I, you're all over social media, aren't you? Well, Instagram. You're, you're quite not, the thing on Instagram. I uh, well, look, will you come back and see us again? I would It's been a really fun conversation and yes. brilliant to have you on the show. Thank you for a having British me. sporting legend in our midst, live in the studio. My sincere <laughs> thanks to Lisa Mason, Thank champion you. gymnast and former Olympian. Actually, not former. You're always an Olympian, it turns out. I was told that <laughs> by Chris Akabusi very forcefully. <laughs>